You know what I didn't realize when I had this idea? There are a lot more invincible moves in Smash than I thought there were. I spend an unholy amount of time on UltimateFrameData.com control effing for every possible instance of armor, invincibility, intangibility, invulnerability, the various misspellings of those words. There are a few things that aren't going to show up here, mostly recovery moves that don't actually have hitboxes. Counters and any counter-esque moves are also not going to show up on here, basically anything that was in my counter tier list video. So if you truly think something was missed, by all means let me know, but please also just ask yourself if maybe it didn't really belong on here. Okay, let's do it. Let's start off with kind of Mr. Invincible himself here, King K. Rule. He's got a lot of moves to go over. Neutral Air. This is a pretty fantastic Neutral Air, honestly. King K. Rule has the belly armor mechanic, which means that a lot of his moves have armor specifically on his gut. That armor can be broken and stun him, but you really don't see it show up that much. Apart from that, Neutral Air really doesn't have that much ending leg, so it's really good for combo starting. The armor also makes it a really good edge guarding tool. It's even reasonably quick to start up, especially by King K. Rule standards. I think that one is actually going to start off with an S tier. Down Smash. One of the best down smashes in the game, it's protected from below by the spot dodge effect, ridiculously strong, has a shockwave hitbox on it. That's gonna be another easy S tier for me. Up smash. This move really does not seem to do all that much. Nowhere near as good an anti-air as a lot of his other tools. Extremely committal, hitting people on the ground with it essentially doesn't matter at all. The only major strength of this move that I can see is that the sweet spot is quite strong, but you're not really even gonna be going for the sweet spot unless you're specifically comboing out of down air. Yeah, that seems needlessly restrictive to me, C tier. Speaking of down air, the armor aspect really doesn't show up on this move all that often, but that aside, it's a pretty good spiking down air. 14 frames for how strong it is, really not that bad. Negative 9 on shield, not amazing, not the best aerial in the game, but especially if you cross it up, it can be hard for a lot of characters to deal with. Pretty generous hitbox, and the knockback scaling is fairly nice so that it kills effectively off stage, but if you use it as a combo tool, it's actually still very good there. It doesn't send your opponent too high, particularly quickly. A tier, forward tilt. Again, this is a really nice forward tilt. Great range, solid kill power the armor comes into effect a lot here. Not particularly safe on shield, but if you space it really well, not every character can deal with it effectively. It does have that kind of range going for it. It's a very solid move for K. Roll. You see them use it a lot. I think that actually just barely sneaks us away into A tier. I was kind of debating between A and B. Crown Orang. I feel like this may be a bit of a controversial opinion. I don't think this move is very good at all. K. Roll does kind of need it to help control neutral, but it's so slow to throw out. It's really not that hard to dodge. The armor on it does last a surprisingly long time, but you can't just grab him out of the armor. I'd say it's actually scary carrier is a standalone item for your opponent to be using against you. Luckily, that doesn't really happen that often, but it is a thing. It's still a projectile you need to worry about. I guess we can put it in B tier. It's definitely better than some stuff on this list. Dash attack. Pretty good range on this, and it's pretty quick. It's horrifically unsafe. That's its major flaw. But you can get some combos or pseudo combos out of it. King K. Roll really appreciates the burst movement option. The armor can be used to catch landings and stuff like that. I'm going to say it's not a half bad dash attack, and it's particularly useful for King K. Rule. Up air. I think this is one of the worst up airs in the game way too committal compared to essentially every other up air. You can use it to stall yourself off stage, and it is pretty beastly, and it has quite a bit of protection, so it's not a useless move, but I'm not especially impressed by it either, C tier. As you can see, I'm breezing through the list pretty quickly. That's just how the video is going to be. I'm going to be skipping over some use cases. The video is already going to be long. I don't need to be lingering too much. Pokemon Trainer. Pokemon Switch itself, kind of a weird one to evaluate. It's ultimately a frame one escape option, though. It does halt like your aerial momentum, so it can be frame trapped to some degree, but frame one is frame one, and the mechanic it introduces, switching the Pokemon around. Very cool, very useful, kind of the heart and soul of Pokemon Trainer. I feel like I kind of have no choice but to give this one S tier. It's hard to evaluate it as a standalone tool, right? But in the context of his kit, what are you going to do? Withdraw. This move's kind of a gimmick. It can be used to force yourself out of disadvantage, but if your opponent catches onto it, you can get punished pretty hard for that. It's decent on shield, at least. You can get really horrifically punished if your opponent manages to footstool it. At the moment, you don't really see it that much. There's no guarantee that's not going to happen more in the future. Not that good for recovery, which is the main purpose of a lot of these burst movement kind of tools. Not the worst in the world, but if you get knocked the other way, you're potentially in some serious trouble. I'm gonna say C tier. It's not a move that you never see Squirtle players use, but it's not that great either. Charizard's Flare Blitz. As a standalone move or as a hard read option, whatever. Yeah, obviously it's pretty strong, but come on, at higher levels of play, how often do you actually see this get pulled out as anything but a recovery move? Yes, I know tech chases are a thing sometimes, but it's really not that common. That said, as a recovery move, it's not half bad. There's a little bit of damage to Charizard, but that's fairly negligible. 
example, I'll say B tier just for recovery purposes. Fly. 9 frame startup killing out of shield move that also goes fairly high so it's a decent recovery tool. Not as good out of shield as you might expect though, it's kind of inconsistent and the main issue is that for some reason the hitbox is just not anywhere near what it should be. Only covers in front of him, I don't really know why that's a thing, the animation doesn't suggest that at all. 9 frame startup is decent, but it's not the kind of thing that can catch just any aerial on your shield. You do need to be a little bit careful with how you use this, especially since it's really punishable if you miss. Very little opportunity to mix your drift back up into freefall on the way down or anything like that. Eh, B tier for this one as well. It's a pretty solid, if not especially incredible recovery tool, and it's got some outer shield use, I just wish the outer shield was a little bit better. By the way, some of you Pokemon trainer players out there may be wondering why something like Charizard's up air, which has intangibility on his head for a couple of frames, isn't on this list. There are a lot of moves out there which have a little bit of protection on specific body parts. For example, a lot of Donkey Kong's moves protect his arms for a couple frames so that they work more like swords. Or you see this with a ton of moves designed to work as anti-airs, they'll protect just the very top of the model. And as a general rule of thumb, that's not really what this list is meant to encapsulate. You know, I'm looking for full body or nearly full body protection, actual proper invincible moves. Having said that, I did make a few exceptions, most prominently Mario's up smash and Snake's dash attack, which which actually have relatively specific protection, but I knew if people were clicking on a video called the Invincible Moves tier list, a lot of them would be clicking expecting to see them show up, so okay, fair enough. Just go in knowing that they are exceptions, and for the most part, I'm not going to be showing that kind of stuff on here. Dolphin Slash. This is a fantastic out of shield option. Frame 5 startup, frame 4 intangibility, which goes to frame 1 if you're in the air, by the way, so it's also an incredible combo breaker, and on top of all of that, it kills, and it's a really solid recovery where trying to time the 2 frame is completely unreactable, and Reverse Dolphin Slash has started being used as a really effective edge guarding tool. Yeah, nah, this thing's incredible. This is one of the better up specials in the game, S tier. Speaking of S tier, Game & Watch is fire. Do I really need to say more with this one? Frame 3 startup, one of the best recovery moves in the game combo starter, combo ender. Yeah, most of you knew this was coming already. Game & Watch's up smash, also an incredible up smash. Hitbox is a little stubbier than you might want, especially because Mr. Game & Watch is not an especially fast grounded character, but it gives you a lot of invincibility, it's really strong, and most importantly, it has like no ending lag on it whatsoever. So it's one of the safest up smashes, if not the safest up smash to just spam in the entire game. Spam it on shield, spam it in neutral, spam it in advantage, you're good. Another easy S tier. This video has been too optimistic. Kirby's hammer flip. The armor on this is reasonable if you let it get charged up properly, which to be fair, if you're using this, it's most likely going to be for a ledge trap, so you will have time to charge it up more likely than not. It's still pretty bad at the ledge, though. You really should be looking for something else. The base version isn't even especially strong. F tier, one of the most iconic Kirby copy abilities, disappointingly bad in Smash. Stone, definitely a gimmick move, fan favorite move for sure, but that doesn't make it competitively particularly viable. It's not completely unviable, though, especially since you can use it to get below the ledge so you can get yourself out of disadvantage that way. Kirby's admittedly not particularly great coming up to the ledge either, but it is an option there. I will say C tier for this one. King DDD. His hammer is much better than Kirby's, has armor no matter how long you charge it up for, and it's actually really effective armor. Scales up to be a strong move really quickly, and very significantly, it hits ledge. So DDD at ledge with a Gordo coming towards you and hammer being charged is actually kind of terrifying. Faster release time than Kirby's Hammer 2. This one I actually think goes into B tier. On most characters' kits, it would still be in C tier, but ledge trapping is a major strength of the character, and this is actually a pretty good boost to it that you do see some King DDD players use fairly regularly. Super DDD Jump basically only really useful as a recovery move. There is some gimmicky stuff you can get with it, particularly if you break a shield, you can go for a spike. And DDD is a character that can, from time to time, get shield breaks, but unless your opponent's at very low percents, there's no real reason to need to go for this setup. You can just charge up one of his extremely strong killing moves anyways. So realistically, that basically just leaves us as a recovery tool. It really only works if he's directly below the ledge. If you need to come down with this thing, particularly onto the stage, you're in deep trouble. But because of the multiple jumps, it's not really that that hard for King DDD to set up under the ledge even if his air mobility is really lacking. It doesn't always protect you though. I'm gonna say B tier just because at least sometimes armored returns to stage are nice. Really has nothing else going for it. I kind of considered putting this one in C tier, but I think it does just enough as a recovery tool. Round things out with Meta Knight here, Dimensional Cape. Dimensional Cape is actually pretty good. Almost legless recovery with plenty of angles to choose from. As an attack, it is somewhat risky to go for, but the attack is really powerful. As a utility tool though, it's really solid and Meta Knight players 
do use it fairly heavily. A tier. Roy's Blazer. It is a bit of a limiting recovery tool. I think if Roy had a better recovery move, he would be a better character. But it does at least extend fairly far above your head, so it can be somewhat difficult to challenge. And even though frame 9 isn't an amazing out of shield frame, it is armored from frame 4, so you can use it preemptively out of shield or in scramble situations. If it was a good kill move, despite the weakness to recovery, I think I could put it in S tier, as is solid A. Chrom. Now, this is a problem, and I need to decide how I'm going to evaluate Soaring Slash here. It does absolutely insane damage, and while its cheese setups aren't nearly as true as people originally thought they were, they still do exist. That said, Chrom is generally regarded as much worse than Roy nowadays, and it basically entirely comes down to having to deal with Soaring Slash. As is, I've seen plenty of people not even put him in top tier anymore. So purely in the context of his kit, I feel like you could almost make an argument for F tier for it, just because it's holding his viability back so much. I don't think I'm willing to commit nearly that hard. There are so many ridiculous strengths this move has, but again, in context, it's doing so much to damage Krom. He does not need this tool, right? His damage output is already fantastic, and he kills so consistently that having this kind of cheese is not a big deal to him. Sonic. Spin Dash, I'm just going to go ahead and put an S tier. That move is Sonic. It does essentially everything you could ever ask for for a burst movement tool. It didn't even need invincibility. By the way, for anyone in the comments yelling at me for using invincibility or invulnerability or intangibility or armor interchangeably, whatever. I'm not getting stuck in the weeds for this video. Up Smash. Really specific hitbox. Too specific. Not that good on platforms. Invulnerability isn't that great, but it is really strong and is also a surprisingly good shield poke. Some stuff that Up Smash is supposed to do, it's not that great at. In some departments, it excels balance it out with B tier. Spring Jump is actually a pretty versatile recovery since it does not put you into free fall. Allows you to go for relatively risk-free edge guard attempts as well. Not the most effective edge guarding tool. You don't see it connect too often, but it does work from time to time and you really don't lose that much if you whiff. And it's even got a niche of being able to stop your opponent from freely coming off the respawn platform. They need to commit a little bit one way or another. A tier for this one. It's pretty good. Banjo Kazooie's Wonder Wing. The usage limit on this one kind of sucks and I know it's probably necessary, especially for like mid-level, low-level casual play. At higher levels of play though, Banjo-Kazooie players don't always even necessarily get to burn all five feathers each stock. That issue aside though, essentially free recoveries are really nice, and it's a pretty solid combo ender as well. It's not as good as a lot of people used to think, me included, but I think I will just allow it into S tier. The recovery thing in particular gives it a lot to offer. Editing Mockrock here, I realized that if I included Sonic's up special, I also should have included Banjo-Kazooie's the shock spring jump. At the end of the video, I'm going to make a couple of amendments to the initial recording session, and this will be the first one. Okay, let's just get Kazi out of the way. I'm gonna have to deal with this at some point. Look at this. This is ridiculous. Down tilt has some combo applications, but it's not a staple combo tool for him, and he actually does give a fair amount up by not having a faster, more traditional down tilt. Those tend to be really important neutral tools for characters. C tier for this one. Rage drive. Good comeback mechanic. Not the best comeback mechanic in the game by any means. It's got a relatively specific percentage it works for. It doesn't actually kill until reasonable percentages. It does a lot of damage no matter what, but you fairly often actually see Kazuya opponents survive this. And probably the biggest detriment is honestly just that it doesn't work in the air, so you can't use it for platform setups and stuff like that. Obviously very good in a vacuum, but by the standards of what comeback mechanics was kind of supposed to do, it's alright. Spinning dragon to left hook, maybe a little bit on the gimmicky side by Kazuya standards. It's strong, but there's generally other stuff you'd rather be going for, and it's really unsafe on shield. It does hit crumpled opponents, but there's other stuff you'd rather be hitting crumpled opponents with a lot of the time. C tier. Forward smash. This move is just excessively powerful at the sweet spot, like unreasonably powerful. With that said though, the sweet spot's not not the easiest thing in the world to connect. If your opponent is DIing properly, they can usually avoid the combos into it, and as a standalone move, it's pretty slow and unreliable. You don't actually see Kazuya players throw this out raw a whole lot. So I know it can do ridiculous stuff, but against a practiced opponent who knows the matchup well, I think I'm going to go B tier. Dragon Uppercut, this is one of his staple kill moves off certain setups. Kazuya's setups are stupid, that's going to be S tier. You don't really use it raw all that much, but it's so good at what it does. Crouch Dash, bit questionable if you would call this a move. I say it is. I also say it's broken to hell. Tons of invincibility, extremely spammable, and leads into some of his best moves. How can I not put this one in S tier? Tombstone Crusher, Eh, it's a move you need to be settled into a crouching pose for a while to use, and it's not as strong as a lot of his other moves. C tier. Devil Fist. If you get hit by this, you're essentially just dead, or at least taking unholy amounts of damage. It's really good for tech chases. It's good as a ledge mix-up. It's not an incredible ledge mix-up because it's so easy to see coming, but that doesn't mean people never get hit with it. S tier. Not his best S tier move, but S tier all the same. Up Smash. As a standalone move, it's decent. Nothing insane, but still pretty good, but the main purpose of this move is to be comboed into out of electric wind god fist, so... 
S tier for that alone. Down smash. Bit of a weird down smash. The spiky nature does let you do a lot of stuff with it though. Get at the ledge. A tier? Heaven's door. It's not the best command grab out there. Frame 14's a little bit on the slow side, but it is an aerial command grab that does really good damage and kills and lets you get early cheese setups with it. Uh, S tier. Electric Wind God Fist. Where do I put S tier? As far as just straight up melee attacks go, this is unquestionably the best one in the game in my opinion. Stupid amounts of invincibility, stupidly safe on shield, and the combo potential is obviously just ridiculous. This is what makes Kazuya Kazuya. Sora's Down Smash. This one's pretty similar to K Rules, which means it's also very good. Great hitbox, really solid protection between the proper invincibility and the hurtbox shifting. Sends a kind of an insane angle, really good two-frame tool. In practice, you don't necessarily see Sora mains pulled out that, that often because, you know, they're in the air using their aerials so often, and for ledge setups, they've got forward tilt and stuff like that. But it is available if they want it, and it's really good. Sephiroth smash attacks, specifically when he's in the one-wing form. Down smash, easy S tier. This move is a shield breaker that gets very safe at range in one wing form and decently strong and it reaches really far off stage. You do need to factor in how often you are in one wing form as part of the criteria for this move. You're in the wing form enough that this is a really useful move in a match. Up smash. The coverage on this is insane. One of the best platform pressure tools in the game. It is kind of on the slow side though and it is competing with up air. It's not like insanely broken but the utility is high enough for this one that I think I can just let it into S tier. Forward smash. Smash. It's just kind of a big, dumb smash attack. The armor on it is nice, but the thing is, if an opponent's hitting the armor, Sephiroth is probably getting them with a sour spot of the sword, at least in a lot of matchups. Even though the wing form grants it additional safety on shield, it's still very, very unsafe. I would say B tier. In a lot of ways, it's below average for a smash attack, but the fact that it does have additional power and armor, I guess, moves it up to average. Clad's limit moves, blade beam, cross slash, climb hazard. Again, you're going to have to factor in how often you actually have a limit, including the timer on it. As a standalone projectile, Limit Blade Beam would be absolutely nuts. As a payoff for your comeback mechanic, it's... Eh... It's okay, it doesn't kill until very late, but it is at least reasonably risk-free. Limit Cross Slash is very good. In practice, I would say you see Limit Blade being thrown out more often just because it's less committal and a lot of the time you just have to burn Limit. But when Cross Slash does play out, it kills fairly early. In certain circumstances, your opponent can actually dodge the last hit and punish you for using this, but the timing for that can be pretty specific. And if you're going for it off stage, for example, it's a really, really good edge guarding tool. It's got lots of good use. And then Limit Climb Hazard. So it's obviously a very good recovery move, goes exceptionally fast. Far. Not impossible to intercept though, the thing is it gives you more mix-up options so you can decide to go directly for ledge or you can go over ledge onto the stage so for example trying to counter it can become more tricky. It does kill reasonably effectively too and you do see cloud mains go for that sometimes. If you're using it for recovery purposes that's not necessarily what you want to be doing with limit but you know it can save your stock and it can allow you to go for a play that would otherwise kill you. A tier. Piranha Plant's long stem strike. You do see Piranha Plant players use this but the thing is it's often just kind of more of a well what else do I have to do in this situation kind of move. It's really committal to throw out, and the armor's only on the retraction part of the move. Once they actually extend out, that's all a hurt box. Not necessarily a bad move, and it's not a total gimmick, but I'm gonna say there's a decent amount of damn specials in the game where if you replace this with one of them, the character would become better. It's all right. The Shines, Fox, and Wolf. For the actual reflecting projectiles purposes, they're both perfectly fine. Fox's is very quick at frame three, and it's actually invulnerable on frame two, so you can use it as a combo breaker. That's that's pretty nice. Has some stalling potential in the air as well. As an actual attack though, it's not really that good. It's only real purpose. This is an edge guarding move. You can use it. Fox players do go for it from time to time, but going for edge guards with Fox is risky because of how fast he falls and how vulnerable his recovery is. And he also has some of the best ledge trapping in the game. So in practice, you don't really see them pull it out that often as an actual attacking move. I'd say as an actual attack, it's probably more of a C tier, but with the reflector property and the stalling property, that'll bump it up to B. Wolf. Slower at frame 6 and invulnerable on frame 5, so not as good a combo breaker. It gets used a lot more often in practice though, as the meta's gone on, wolf players have actually started incorporating this more and more into their combo trees, and it does a really effective job of extending combos at earlier percents. That's his only real purpose, but it's a pretty good purpose. And because wolf has the tools to play a slower, more methodical game too, he also it gets more opportunity to make use of the reflector. I think that bumps it up to A tier. Bylas Amir, that's gonna be an F tier, slightly better warlock punch. Yeah, being able to 
to drop through platforms is kind of nice, I guess, and it has a shockwave hitbox, but in reality, who cares? This move sucks anyways. Ryu and Ken's Shoryuken. If you're wondering where focus attack is, it's in the counters video, and yes, I do address the fact that I know it's not really a counter. These are real staple moves of the character's kits. Very quick, very strong, good invincibility. Even in a vacuum, they'd be pretty good, and you do see Ryu and Ken players just throw them out sometimes, but what really breaks them is the fact that there are so many different confirms into them. A huge part of Ryu and Ken's game plan, it seems like Ken's in particular, really do seem to be based around just comboing into Shoryuken for early kills. So I think these both slot into S tier pretty comfortably. And then Simon and Richter's uppercut. As a recovery tool, they're not awful, but the distance is kind of lacking, and Simon and Richter in particular, because of how awful their air mobility is, really would appreciate having something better. Also not really that good at killing off the top, which is unfortunate because they do have a lot of setups into them that are so close to being really cool and working really well, and they just kind of don't. As note a shield move, uppercut is very good. Frame 6 startup and pretty generous hitbox, and that's a huge perk. If these characters didn't have that, they would have like nothing in close quarters, but that's really all it has going for it, and you can say some elements are actually kind of anti-synergistic with the rest of Simon and Richter's kit. The pits, upper dash arm, and by extension electroshock arm, and Guardian Orbitars. The arms are not that good, you basically use them for recovery. You can do mix-ups off the ledge with them, that works every now and then, not that big a deal. That's part of the reason that I would personally say Pits is better than Dark Pits, it kills more consistently and it will actually kill in the air, which Dark Pits will very rarely ever do unless you're really going far off stage because these moves are significantly less powerful if you use them in the air. In theory, a really powerful armored move seems like it should be pretty good, but the armor comes out on the second frame after it detects a hurt box, not the first frame, so in reality these are incredibly easy easy to stuff out. You can edge cancel them, but that's not really that impactful. It's not really something you'd miss that much if you couldn't. It's got enough different use cases that I think it can go in B, even though each of those individual use cases are kind of mediocre. Guardian Arbitars. These are pretty good, though. The pits are famous for being very fair, balanced characters. If there's a single move on their kit that you can say is cheesy, I would actually say it's this one. It just allows them to not deal with a lot of janky stuff that essentially every other character in the game has to. You can use it in the air, you can use it off stage, you can use it off the ledge. It works as a perfectly functional reflector too. The main benefit this move has is how low lag it is to put the orbitars away, so if your opponent tries to hit you while you have them out, you often actually end up in an advantageous position because of that, especially if the orbitars break, which for some reason makes them even quicker to act out of. These aren't perfect, it's fair for there to be a blind spot somewhere in there, but their feet in particular, I'm gonna say it's so prominent that a lot of the time your opponent hits it even seemingly with bad spacing, just kind of by accident. But they're good, I can't deny that these things do a lot for the character. Warlock Punch can just go ahead and join it. F to your brother in there. Really don't think I need a lot of explanation for that. Good as a shield break punish. That's really it. Sheik's Vanish. This is an insanely good recovery tool. Goes really far and you're protected basically the entire time. And if you use it from above the ledge, it's not even too frameable. And then on top of that, it's even a really good kill move. That's not really something that you see come up too often, but you can do it. I think this one goes into S tier, mostly for the recovery aspect. Sheik is essentially just unedge guardable because of this move, but the kill options are nice to have. Bowser. His tilts do have armor. It's very mild armor. It doesn't actually come up that much in general play. It doesn't mean they're not good though. Up tilt, massive coverage, good kill move, relatively safe if you space the reverse hit, some follow-up potential, really, really, really good up tilt. It's a fantastic anti-air and platform pressure tool in a way that mostly is reserved for up smashes, and it's got additional utility on top of that. Are you kidding me? Forward tilt, one of the best forward tilts in the game, extremely strong, intangible arm on top of the general full body armor, so it's essentially a sword move. Reasonably quick, great range, and to top it all off, it also lasts a long time and you can angle it down, so it's also an exceptionally good two-framing move. That one's going in S tier as well. Down tilt, it doesn't really do anything better than forward tilt does. Less safe on shield, worse at killing, leggier. There's essentially no reason for Bowser players ever to use this thing. I know occasionally they do. This is the best F tier move on this list so far, easily, but I don't really know which character would necessarily want this. Down smash, as far as these sweep side-to-side -side down smashes go, this is probably one of the best ones. Reasonably quick startup, it two frames, and it's just insanely strong. Not the most used tool in its kit, but in its category it's really good, A tier. Forward smash can kill from zero off of the shield break because you can use the tip or flame breath to get the damage racked up to the point where this will kill. That is a situation that comes up from time to time because Bowser is a reasonable shield breaking character. Generally speaking though, this is just a straight up Hail Mary move, and you know what? As far as those go, this is pretty good because it's one of the literal strongest attacks in the entire game. Do you use it a lot? 
No. When it works, it really works, though. And then Up Smash is just an insane anti-air and platform pressure tool, and it's even got a landing hitbox to give you a little bit of coverage if you try to, for example, hit someone as they're coming down and they avoid it. Incredibly strong and big move that probably makes the best use of invincibility in Bowser's kit. This one is going into S tier. Bowser Jr., the clown cart dash. Probably the best move in his kit, certainly the one he relies on the most. It's kind of budget Sonic, but budget Sonic is still budget and insane move. The vast majority of the time, what you're doing is rushing towards your opponent and jump canceling out of it. Not that it doesn't have other utility as well, and not that that's bad utility. S tier for this one. Captain Falcon's looking lonely over there. Raptor Boost is kind of nuts. It's got the same thing with Pit, where the hitbox doesn't activate on the first frame it should, so the armor can be eaten through randomly. But how much can you really complain about an armored burst movement tool that still combos at 150%? S tier. Corrin. We've got the Dragon Ascent, and we've got the Dragon Lunge. After being buffed so that it's got decent range, Dragon Ascent is actually kind of hard to challenge. It's a pretty solid recovery move. The main thing that stops me from calling it a great up special is that it's frame 18, so you can't really use it as a proper outer shield tool essentially at all. You can go for some Hail Mary off the top kills though, that's not a particularly effective strategy, it's not even that strong, but I've seen it once or twice. B tier. Pin got in here on a technicality, you get a bit of invulnerability when you jump out of it. I still gotta consider the entire move though. I know this is not what it used to be in Smash 4, but on its own merits, it's still quite good. Reasonably solid neutral tool since you can mix up between kicking back or jumping out or cancelling it manually. All of those can technically be punishable a lot of the time, but you need to be prepared with some characters. Has some use to help with recovery. Taper is insanely strong if you land it in the air, and it's a really good two-frame tool. I would honestly say that even robbed of its glory days, this still works as S tier. A lot of characters would like to have this. Mewtwo's Disable. You don't see Mewtwo mains land this that often, and a lot of the setups into it are reasonably specific. Yeah, you've got the footstool stuff kind of like in Smash 4, but I'm going to need some time to see how that actually plays out. Part of the issue is there's just no real, like, ultra top level Mewtwo rep right now, so I'd say the setup you generally see nowadays is a tech chase, particularly on a platform. It's also got some double jump cheese off the ledge, which if an opponent knows the matchup, they're going to be expecting, but it does mean they need to sort of lay back a bit and be a bit more careful. You can't just shield at the ledge against Mewtwo because confusion's a thing. Range is surprisingly good, and if it does connect, the payoff is always insane. I think it's just a bit too situational and a bit too uncommon for me to put it in S tier, but it's kind of close. I think A tier is very fair. Hero. Kazap is mostly kind of a gimmick. It does have a reasonable armor on it, and it's really strong if it does connect, but realistically not really something that you see hero mains throw out a whole lot. It's very punishable if it whiffs, and it uses up a lot of mana. F tier. Kaklang is in there almost as a joke. It does absolutely nothing. F tier again. Kamikaze does have some use. It's very situational use. You obviously need to be a stock up and in a very advantageous position, but the hitbox is huge, and it is extremely powerful. I think C tier for that one. Jigglypuff's Rest. I think it's fair to say most of you know what this move does. Frame 2. Kills insanely early. Ultimate made it a lot better by having you wake up earlier if you land it so you're not consistently hard punished off the respawn every time. I think I'm going to be maybe a bit controversial though, and I'm going to put it in A tier rather than S tier. I'm sure some people are expecting S tier. The thing is, the setups into it, they do exist. They're certainly better than they've been the last few games, but ultimately still a little bit inconsistent and unreliable. And as I've said before, if you look at the best Jigglypuff play, it doesn't really use rest essentially at all. I'm not saying you never see it, but at top level, Jigglypuff really really isn't a character that can afford to take a lot of risks, and rest is very risky. So are a lot of the setups into it, like sing and stuff. Again, they happen, the move's not bad by any means, but I don't think they happen nearly consistently enough. Pyra Mithra. We got the down special, which is just called Swap to Pyra or Swap to Mithra. Not the most creative naming there. And then we've also got Lightning Buster for Mithra. The swap is significantly worse than Pokemon Trainer in the sense that it's frame 6 rather than frame 1, so rather than being quicker than an air dodge, it's significantly slower than an air dodge. But the trade-off, of course, is that you don't need to deal with rotations at all, so if you ever wanted to switch, for example, from Squirtle to Charizard, you've got to go to Ivysaur in the middle. Pyramithra, easy to swap freely between, and they have more well-rounded kits than the Pokemon do. And because both the characters are really good in their roles, I think I have to put that one in S tier too. Again, a little bit weird to evaluate. Lightning Buster, Mithra tends to pull this one out a fair amount. It's a very solid combo ender, which Mithra is certainly not lacking in by any means, and it's also got some B-reverse application. It can be surprisingly safe on shield, to the point where if you charge it up from any kind of of distance is essentially unpunishable. It's not the best move on Mithra's kit, but we're talking about a pretty solid move on one of the absolute best characters in the game. PK Thunder and then Lucas is up smash as well. PK Thunder is kind of interesting. For Ness, that's a major hindrance to his recovery. The fact that he has to rely on that is actually kind of a problem. Much less of an issue for Lucas because of how much further it travels and the fact that he continues to go through opponents so you can't body block him the same way you can with Ness. As an attack, Ness is a single hit, which has its pros and cons. It can kill off the top at high 
sense and it can set up for some combos and edge guarding situations and on stage it's much more disruptive. At the same time off stage sometimes you need to aim for the tail because you don't really want to be launching your opponent high into the air and that's much more how Lucas's works by default with the multi-hit nature. And then Lucas of course can't get those super early cheesy kills with PK Thunder 2. Both these moves are pretty good in their own ways, very different ways, surprisingly different ways. I think A tier for both of them. Ness has some really extreme highs and some really extreme lows, Lucas's is much more smoothed out throughout. And then Lucas's up smash, full body invincibility, hits like a truck and it's huge so it's a fantastic call out as an anti-air. That's really the only thing it does though and you need to commit hard if you miss or if your opponent doesn't actually jump in on you, you're kind of screwed. Really not a versatile up smash at all and a lot of up smashes are relatively versatile moves. I've had some people really advocate for this move in my comments before, I don't necessarily agree with that and in practice you don't see Lucas mains use it that often. I think B tier, it's got its niche but it's nothing insane. Donkey Kong. Giant Punch is kind of nuts. It does take some some charge up time but the charge up time isn't really that bad. Hitbox is gigantic, kills incredibly early, the grounded version has great armor, it can break shields, and at full charge it's negative 4 on shields so it's really risk free for how much reward you're getting off of it. S tier for that one. Headbutt, you can use it to cover yourself coming down, the armor on it's fairly effective for that but it's not a great option, your opponent can play around it pretty easily, you're generally better trying to mix up your hand slap B reverses. It is a reasonably effective shield breaker but it's fairly fairly committal and by DK standards it's kind of a stubby move and if it doesn't break the shield it's just insanely unsafe. It does potentially give good reward if you connect the barrier as well but it's just a bit too much of a gimmick. In practice you generally see DK players opt for more effective tools instead, C tier. And then Spinning Kong is kind of an interesting one. As a recovery move it's really bad. I know it's got great horizontal range but it's still a massively exploitable part of DK's kit. You just see this punished constantly at higher levels of play and it doesn't really give DK much leeway with how he wants to recover. As a ground move it's got pretty solid armor on it and it's incredibly strong, actually something you see DK players use moderately often even though it's kind of slow and punishable. The hitbox can be a bit inconsistent, I think B tier. Me Gunner's cannon jump kick. As an shield option, this is pretty stupid. Frame 6, full body invincibility, has a very generous hitbox and kills shockingly early. Not really something you actually see me Gunner players go for a lot though because it has a very little recovery utility and they are relying on that recovery option. So if it's got a lot of really great stuff going for it but at the same time you can't really opt for it because it's just introducing a really crippling flaw into the character's kit, I feel like it's gotta top out a B tier. Shulk's Monado Arts, let's just go ahead and drop that into S tier, one of the absolute best moves in the game period. You wanna kill early, you wanna do tons of damage, you want to be insanely mobile, you want to cheat, it's got you covered. Palutena, we got the dash attack and we got the back air and these ones may be stretching the definition a little bit since it is technically just the shield that's providing invincibility rather than it being a full body thing. A, even if I wasn't going to choose them normally they're in the same category as Snake and Mario where people are expecting to see them and B, I mean hey the shield is fully invincible. I think this is the best dash attack in the game, really quick goes decently far, fantastic at anti-airing and catching landings, decently strong, no contest for me this goes in S tier, and I actually think the exact same thing goes for her back air. Fantastic at air to air, fantastic at air to ground, really quick, really safe, decently strong, S tier again. Get Pikachu out of the corner there and we'll throw in Pichu as well. Thunder for both these characters is quite strong. They're great for air dodge reads, you can get some true confirms into them particularly from Pichu, giant hitboxes that poke through the stage so you can use them to guard your recovery, have some degree of combo breaking built into them as well. They're not the most broadly applicable moves in every character's kit but I think for what Pichu and Pikachu are looking to do, these are really good. And then Pichu's Dan Smash, did you know this was invincible? I didn't know it was invincible, I have no idea why it needs to be invincible, it's already so strong. Yeah, S tier again. Me Swordfighter Stone Scabbard. It goes pretty high, but that's really all it's got going for it, it's kind of the DDD thing where yes, it does have some decent travel distance, but it goes at a very specific arc, so you really need to be positioned carefully. Has very little utility outside of that, 13 frame startup, that's not particularly good. It is what you'd want to use if you're planning to go off stage with down air a lot, personally I don't think that's really worth the risk and it's certainly not worth giving up what are two other fairly good up special slots, particularly Skyward Slash 
Dash Dash. Yeah, this really doesn't do very much. I'm not going to put it in F tier just because at the end of the day, it is a really high recovery, but eh, Samus's Screw Attack and Zero Zoot Samus's Flip Jump. Screw Attack is extremely fast, frame four, but it's got some other weaknesses to it. The hitboxes can be a bit inconsistent. It can kill, but it doesn't kill until really high percents. And the main thing keeping it from being a great out of shield tool is just that the range isn't particularly good. Can be used to extend ladder combos though. That's another good use case for it. Mobility is not enough to make it an incredible recovery tool. Definitely got some flaws, but it's also got some decent synergy with Samus's kit, and you can't really say no to a frame four out of shield option, even one with some weaknesses. A tier. And then flip jump. You already know this one's going in S tier. Zero Suit Samus barely even has a disadvantage state because of this thing, and it also opens up some really cheesy kill confirms. Pac-Man's power pellet. There are some really specific setups you can go into with this thing, but generally speaking, it's not really used as an attack. It's just a recovery tool. That said, it's a very good recovery tool since it doesn't put you into free fall and it's just so versatile in how you use it. Huge contributor to Pac-Man having one of the best recoveries in the game. A tier. Min Min, the arms hook or the arms jump. Arms hook when you're already in the air sucks. It's a really vulnerable recovery tool and while you can use it offensively, it doesn't really do all that much if it does hit someone. And then for arms jump, it does allow you to pursue with the arms a little bit better, but as far as grounded up specials go, that's nothing particularly impressive. And this has the Chrom thing going for it where the fact that Min Min is stuck with this is a major thing keeping her in check, but it also doesn't have anywhere near the same redeeming qualities. The arms jump barely has any invulnerability on it, and that doesn't even really matter since that's not really how you use the move anyways. F tier. Olimar's Whistle. Obviously this plays a really vital role in Olimar's kit, swapping the order of your Pikmin, and on top of that you actually see Olimar players use it all the time as a surrogate air dodge. It's frame 2, so S tier for tons of necessary utility. Little Mac. Lots to work with here. Jolt Haymaker. Actually pretty good as an offensive tool. It's got a high enough and a quick enough hitbox that you can confirm into it fairly easily. It's a good but unspectacular attack though, and as a recovery tool, again, it's a really crippling weakness for Little Mac. Not that much range in the fact that you can't use it again if you get hit out of it. That's not good. Safe from F tier just because its offensive utility is quite high. Rising Uppercut is other recovery move. Frame 3, which is literally as fast an of shield option as you can get, and it kills very reliably, and he's got kill confirms into it. That's all great stuff, but once again, he's stuck trying to use it to recover. In this case, I think it's going to go into B tier because it really does have a lot of insane combat applications and it doesn't have that thing where if you're hit after using it, you can't use it again, but that recovery is a really big deal. Forward Smash. In a vacuum, the best forward smash in the game. Super Armor does tons of work here. Super strong. Good frame data. Three variants, all of which are useful, and what really puts this move over the top is that the downward angled variant is an incredible shield breaker tool. I don't know what more you're wanting a forward smash to do. Up Smash. Not bad. It's got armor and a fairly generous hitbox, so it is a pretty solid anti-air. The main issue is that the only really exceptional part of this move is the sweet spot, which is in kind of a specific location, and if you're trying to hit an opponent with that, why aren't you just using forward smash or down smash instead? I guess the answer there would be out of shield, which isn't a terrible answer. It's frame 10, and sometimes it would put you into the sweet spot positioning. Frame 10's not awful, but it definitely doesn't put him in that be careful about touching my shield category. His up special does, so realistically, you're probably going to use that instead, but hey, you know, frame 10 armored anti-air, how bad can it really be? Dance smash, again, very good smash attack. Excellent in scramble situations because it covers both sides, and it's got full armor, and it's very fast. Pretty strong considering its other merits as well, and it's also a good two-frame tool. This is a really nice down smash. I think a lot of characters would like to have this. Straight lunge, surprisingly good. As an attack, it's not that great, but because the charge has armor on it and you can cancel it, you actually see top Mac players use it all the time to get out of disadvantage. That's a decently valuable asset to have. I think I'm going to go B tier. And then of course it transitions into the KO punch, which if you connect with it is insane. Hitbox high enough to reach platforms and aerial opponents, goes through shields, kills just absurdly early. You really don't get that many opportunities to use it though, and it's pretty easy to knock out of him. So obviously the payoff is ridiculous, easily S tier comeback mechanic payoff, but in terms of actually being able to use the comeback mechanic, I think it's more along A tier range. Dr. Mario's Dr. Tornado. Actually, let's just get all the plumber stuff in here. Also took the chance to extend now the S tier range because it looks like we're going to need it, which is actually totally fine. Some people seem to think these should always be done in sort of like a bell curve distribution. I'm not trying to force it into that at all. If you have like eight equally good moves and then one move that's a bit worse and another move that's a bit worse than that, there are going to be three tiers. The first is going to have eight. The second's going to have one. The third's going to have one. I'm trying to force it into anything else would just be inaccurate. Okay, so Mario's up smash and this is to a degree going to represent all three plumbers up smashes. Of course, S tier because the plumbers have some of the most infamous up smashes in the game. Very quick 
quick, very strong, shockingly safe if you space them well with a reverse hit. You see these get thrown out constantly. Mario Super Jump Punch, absolute staple combo ender for him because of how his ladder combos work. Sometimes can kill, it's not a particularly strong kill move, but you do see it, and it's not even that uncommon. And it's also a frame 3 out of shield option with very good range, and it's also an invincible, almost unreactable recovery. So it's got a lot of individual elements where in isolation they're all good, but none of them are necessarily at the absolute top of their field. But it's got so many of them, and it does so much that I actually think I can justify S tier for this one. Luigi Super Jump Punch, nowhere near as consistent as Mario's is, but it's responsible for so much cheesy bullshit, and there's so many different ways you can confirm into it, and you better believe Luigi players make use of them. Frame 8 is not like a pristine out of shield option, but it does mean that if your opponent messes up even slightly, they're just dead. Having to use this for recovery is definitely an issue, I do need to take that into account. But even though that is a legitimate problem and a fairly hefty one, I think this just steals so many games that the Luigi player had no right to be taking. Luigi Cyclone, it's frame one invincible, what more do you want? It's one of the absolute best combo breakers in the game, the metaphor has evolved even more since you can slide off ledge with it to make yourself much safer, and it's also a kill move that he can reliably confirm into. Same goes for Dr. Mario. Dr. Tornado confirms are a little bit more specific, but it still gets a lot of use. He really does need this for recovery though, and it's not quite pulling its weight there, and this one is only armored on the ground, which I would say is significantly worse. It is an extremely strong kill move on the ground or in the air. A couple more critical flaws compared to Luigi. Solid A tier though. Terry. Power Dunk gives you so many different mobility mix-ups if you're recovering, or even if you're in disadvantage in general, or even in neutral, because you can space it so that it's completely safe on shield, like unpunishable by the entire cast, and it hits really hard and you can confirm into it so easily with Terry. The main thing is that it can be broken by SDI and certain positioning, so landing it is not 100% guaranteed, but I don't think any of that's enough to detract from how much good stuff it does S tier. Rising Tackle, again responsible for great kill confirms, which I'd say are a bit more consistent than Power Dunk. It doesn't snap to ledge, which is definitely a bit of an issue with recovery, but you are fully invincible and the hitbox sticks up decently high. So in practice, I would say Terry actually doesn't get edge guarded too heavily. It's not quite as devastating a move as Power Dunk and is nowhere near as versatile. It's also not an insane out of shield option because the horizontal hitbox is not amazing. And to get the strong charge version, which you get by holding the analog stick down for I think 10 frames before you use it, you do need to be planning for it a little bit. That's fine if you're doing it out of, say, a jab because you can just hold the stick down while you're doing the jab animation, but in terms of outer shield and stuff like that, you do need just a little bit of preemptive awareness. It's not completely just busted like some moves in Terry's kid, but it's very good. Spot dodge attack. This is pretty solid in its own right. It's frame 5 startup out of a spot dodge, so not bad, but I mean his jab is frame 3 and this eats the buffer jab out of spot dodge input, and you certainly can combo out of it, but it's not like it sends your opponent nowhere, down tilt's only one frame slower, the invincibility's not really that big a deal considering you just spot dodge, it does give you more leeway, but that's okay, but nothing, you know, particularly great. I think C tier because it's not a bad move in its own right, you know what I mean? But the fact that it actually takes away from the opportunity to jab sometimes, and then Buster Wolf and Power Geyser, I think I can comfortably put these both in S tier. They're some of the best comeback mechanic moves in the game. Active anytime Terry gets past 100%, he can easily survive to that and beyond. And then Buster Wolf is pretty reliable to combo into, and it can kill very early. Power Geyser, you can combo into that one as well, but its hitbox is just so big you don't even really need to. It's so good at the ledge on a platform as an anti-air, essentially everywhere. We Fit Trainer's Up Smash. Pretty quick up smash, frame 11, and you're fully invulnerable on frame 9. Relatively strong move too, and it gets obviously just insanely strong if you put deep breathing on top of that. And We Fit Trainer does have some confirms into it as well. Not all of them are kill confirms, but it's still good damage. Main issue with this move though is one that a lot of We Fit Trainer moves have. The hitbox is just kind of specific. In this particular case, it's really skinny. It does somewhat hit grounded opponents, but it's clearly much more designed as an anti-air, and it's kind of a specific anti-air. With a bit of a wider hitbox, this could easily be at least A tier, as is Solid B, Borderline A. Villager's Pocket. This is kind of a hard one because in some matchups, it's completely broken. Using this against a Link and stealing their bomb, or against a Diddy and stealing their banana, just fundamentally changes how that character works. On the other hand, in some matchups, it does literally nothing except be kind of a surrogate air dodge. It is an air dodge that you can use in combination with B Reverse, though, which isn't horrible. I think there are enough good characters in Ultimate with prominent projectiles that this probably works its way into 
to A tier, Rob alone is kind of worth the price of admission. Clearly an S tier move in some matchups and against the entire cast, having that kind of momentum shift is not a bad thing. Invulnerable from frames 5 to 23, that's actually really good protection. Joker's gun, just in case having an unreflectable zoning tool slash completely safe edge guard slash get out of jail free disadvantage slash mobility option wasn't enough, they also decided to put invincibility on it. On the dash forward, the dash back, and the jump. Oh, by the way, this move has footstool setups now. So, you know, that's fun. Next, Greninja Shadow Sneak. This has a few kind of cute options as an attack, but realistically, generally what you're doing with this is recovering. It's not an awful recovery, it goes pretty far, but it is also fairly laggy. Luckily though, your Greninja, your mobility overall is very good, so you can use this and spawn fairly far away from the stage and still be able to make it back pretty comfortably without being too worried about getting punished. That said, compared to a lot of other stuff on the list, Shadow Sneak is just not that impressive. Yeah, it's a nice bit of a bonus recovery to have, but if Greninja just had Hydro Pump and that insane double jump they'd get by just fine. Wario's Waft, of course this one's going in S tier. There's nothing your opponent can do about it besides look out for your combo setups and try and kill you first. Mega Man, you've got the up tilt and you've got rush coil. So up tilt is very blatantly Shoryuken before real Shoryuken made it into Smash. It's got the invincibility, it's got the power, can't be used out of shield the same way and it doesn't have the same confirms into it, but Mega Man absolutely can confirm into it pretty comfortably. You see Mega Man players actually pull this out quite regularly. Regularly enough in fact that I I think that's gonna go in S tier. And then Rush Coil, solid recovery because it doesn't put you into free fall, and like with Sonic you can use it to mess with your opponent's respawn a bit. Unlike with Sonic though, you can't use this move as an edge guarding tool, in fact that would be very counterproductive. That's not a huge deal, but Sonic was already kind of borderline A, so I think that's actually just enough to knock it down to B tier for me. It's now, I guess, maybe a bit of an above average recovery, but no real out of shield use. Ice Climber is up special. Belay does have some kill setups and stuff into it. I know in the very final Smash Ultimate patch, it actually had its startup produced, which opened up some more. Not exactly the main thing Ice Climber players tend to go for, though, and having to rely on it for recovery is kind of a raw deal. It's pretty interceptable and vulnerable, and the Ice Climbers have to be fairly close together to make use of it. The nice thing about it is that you can use it to rescue the AI climber, that's actually a pretty important use case. The downside to that of course is that you need to use it to rescue the AI climber because if they're by themselves, their up special is going to do absolutely nothing. Tons of Sopo's moves are terrible without the second climber, but rarely do they get hit this hard. It is definitely a weakness of the character, but I think the fact that you can use it to rescue the AI climber is a pretty valuable use case, so I think that just allows it to get into B tier. Snake's dash attack. One of the best dash attacks in the game, not particularly good at combat or killing, but just how insanely quick it is as a burst movement tool is so nice. If you're in any kind of scramble situation and you're not sure what to do, instant dash attack. It'll probably get you there. S tier. Incineroar. Cross chop. It is a bit of a vulnerable recovery. I will say that Incineroar players have gotten better about recovering over time, but it's still certainly below average and cross chop is a contributor to that. As a strictly out of shield option, it's a bit on the slow side, frame 11, but he gets armor on frame 4, so you can use it preemptively out of shield again. And it does pretty solid damage, and it can also kamikaze people, which I would say is probably the main benefit of it. And he actually has throw setups into that as well. They can be a bit on the inconsistent side, but at least sometimes they're apparently just completely true, and he can kill you just ridiculously early off a grab. So it's got some cool use cases, but being honest, the main thing you're wanting this for is recovery. It's not that great a recovery tool, not the worst one in the world either, so B tier. Darkest Lariat. Frame 5 startup, invincible kill move, and if you've got revenge online, this is one of the moves you want to be using with it. Not as safe on shield as it initially looks, your opponent can spot dodge the last hit, but I would still say in scramble situations it's quite good. Incineroar players use this constantly, and then a Lolan Whip is a really good command grab. Fantastic range on it, and all three of the options have their uses. It can be just a straight up kill move, it can put your opponent off stage, or it can put your opponent high into the air. And once again, this is one of the premium moves you want to be using in combination with Revenge, another move that Incinera relies on heavily. Ike's Ether. As a recovery tool, this is not particularly good. Like with Krom, there's a huge blind spot at the top of the move after the sword reaches its apex, which means it's actually surprisingly easy to intercept. Unlike Krom, however, Ike has quick draw, so even though he's a much slower character in the air than Krom is, he still has nowhere near as big an obstacle with this. And if we're talking about it as a non-recovery move, it's actually really good after being patched. It kills insanely early and it has a huge hitbox so it's easy to combo into or to use raw, but it's a little bit risky to go for, but in practice the risk usually seems to be worth it. And then Reverse Ether is a really good edge guarding tool that constantly steals stocks as well. And like Krom, he's still got the kamikaze thing going for him, and also like Krom, he can combo into it. In fact, sometimes the combo 
those are even more reliable. So I'm not going to say recovery isn't a factor for Ether, but it's not really that big a deal and it has so much else to offer for it. So I think this one is solidly going to go in A tier. And then just Zelda left. So starting with Ferrari's Wind, very solid recovery move. It is a teleport move, which means its timing is consistent no matter what distance Zelda is at, which means it can be a bit vulnerable to two framing. But as with other teleport moves, if you use it from above the ledge, it actually protects you from being two framed completely. And then as an offensive tool, it's actually got a lot going for it. Frame six out of shield with a fairly decent hitbox that scoops your opponent into the air and kills them. The fact that it's a two-parter means it is a bit less consistent than some out of shield options, but it's not bad by any means. And the kill power on it is very respectable. And then because it's a teleport move, you can almost kind of use it like a teleport move in a traditional fighting game. If you think your opponent's going to go for something committal, often a projectile pull or something like that, you can actually Ferrari's wind into them, which will put you in a good situation and at later percents, again, actually kill them. Solid recovery move with a lot of other use cases, I think, S tier for this one. And then finally, Naryu's Love, one of the most infamous just go spam this online move Smash has to offer. It's not that powerful, but it gives you full body invincibility starting on frame 4, colossal hitbox that lingers for a long time, be reversible and can be used as a stall tool, reflects for more than half a second, and again the reflection starts on frame 4. This move does a lot, and there's a reason Zelda players lean on it so heavily. Not the safest move, can be punished, you're not completely free to just spam it all the time, but it's one of those moves where your opponent always has to be stopping and thinking about whether to actually try and attack you right now. Even if you don't necessarily opt to use it every chance you get, in every one of those chances, it is affecting the match regardless. And as I said a couple of memes to get through here, I'm going to add Banjo-Kazooie's up special to the same tier as Mega Man's rather than Sonic's. It does have a hitbox like Sonic's, but it's far less disruptive and the move overall is also much slower to use. And a couple moves that I realized after the fact weren't included in UltimateFrameData.com, so I just kind of overlooked looked them. Ike's Eruption only gets armor at the very end of the move, which you're essentially never going to get the chance to charge to, but we do evaluate the entire move and it is a relatively good two-framing tool. That's a pretty specific use case though, and even then a lot of the time you'll see Ike players opt for down tilt or down air instead. A lot of the time they're just easier to set up and less committal, so Eruption's going to get a C tier. It is pretty decent in its niche, but it's a relatively shallow niche and it does absolutely nothing else. And then Exploding Sidekick is joining a mirror down in F tier as another slightly upgraded Warlock Punch. It's by far the best of these because it's the most safe on shield by a considerable considerable margin, but that doesn't make it good. Now, Suplex does have armor after you grab someone, but that's not really in the spirit of the list. That is the criteria that put a Alolan Whip on the list though, so... Rage Drive in retrospect I think was a little bit harsh to it. Is it the most impactful comeback mechanic in the game? No, but it can make a pretty big difference and it's a lot more lenient than some of them, so that'll go up a tier. Sephiroth's up smash, not a bad move by any means, but looking at the entire list of S tiers, I don't think it quite makes the cut. I'd say the same thing about Mithra's Lightning Buster. Bowser's down tilt I think actually just does a bit too much to be in the same tier as some of those moves. Notably Hero, one of the best Bowsers, actually does get some use out of it. And then DK's recovery move actually gives him similar weaknesses to Krom. I'm gonna say it's not nearly as big a weakness, but it's not too far off, and its utility outside of recovery actually isn't as good either. And there you go. With all those changes in place, the Invincible Moves tier list. Thanks for watching everyone and let me know what you thought of the list. Likes and comments are a huge factor YouTube uses to gauge whether this video should be passed around to more people, so if you think it deserves it, much appreciated. Another Mock Rock Talk tier list video above, a video about comeback mechanics on my main channel below, and patrons, YouTube members, and Twitch subs get perks like early videos and Discord access. Later people!